welcome to Servants of the Lord Ministries. My name is Dr. Keith Jenkins and I'm the International Coordinator for Servants of the Lord Ministries. Before I share the message today, let me share again with you the commission of the ministry. And this was given to Joseph Hedgecock many years ago. He said, I have children in every nation and you have brothers and sisters whose hearts are crying out to me. He said, they've sought me for ministry blessings and gifts. I have given them those things and it's blessed them. But there's a part of their spirit that is reserved for an intimate relationship with me. Now their hearts are crying out to me just for me. That is who I'm sending you to because I don't want them to take the years it took you to get to me because there was no one to show you how at the time. Servants of the Lord Ministries is a teaching and training ministry sent to the body of Christ. This message today is for those who want to get to know him and grow up in him. Today I'll be speaking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 26 and verse 41, Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The Spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. Jesus was saying here that only the flesh is subject to temptation. The spirit is willing, but needs feeding. Hallelujah. Paul said in Galatians 5.16, This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. You determine whether the flesh or the spirit is strong in you. The flesh and the spirit are both operating systems. Either of these operating systems can become strong when you feed them. Do not be deceived if your flesh is still strong. Jesus said in John's Gospel, chapter 14 and verse 26, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things. And bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. The flesh uses your mind, but the new nature relies on the Holy Spirit bringing thoughts to your mind. One is based on common sense and reason, and the other on faith in what the Holy Spirit directs to your mind. John fourteen twenty six was given to those disciples who were in the upper room at the end and still following Jesus. Jesus taught us how to pray. This is from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6. I'm reading in verse 8 and I'm reading up to verse 11. Matthew 6 and verse 8 says, Be therefore like unto them, for the Father knoweth the things that ye have need of before you ask him. Verse 9. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Verse 10. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Verse 11. Give us today our daily bread. Verse 12. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Verse 13 says, And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Do not make a big shopping list as God knows what you need before you ask. You're supposed to keep God's name hallowed by living the holy life and seeking to do his perfect will. The disciples were told not to be concerned about the things of the world, even food. But the priority was the forgiveness of their own sins based on them forgiving even those persecuting them and to ask God to close doors of temptation that they did not have the maturity to handle. This is the first lesson in prayer. Do you pray like this? Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 25, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for the body, 
what you shall put on. Is not life more than meat and body than raiment? And instead, we should seek first the kingdom of God. In Matthew 6 and verse 33, Jesus said, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. If you cannot hear God instantly, it's because you have a big carnal nature and a little spirit man. This is not an equal match, especially when you are just born again. You've been sowing to the flesh for years and your carnal nature is much stronger. Paul explained how to feed the right nature by the sowing and reaping principle. Paul said in Galatians chapter 6 verses 7 and 8, be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Verse 8, For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that sows to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap everlasting life. Paul also told us what to do in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 24. And he said there, and that ye put on the new man, which is after God, is created in righteousness and true holiness. If you are still yielding to the flesh, then you have not put on the new man. Paul said in Romans chapter 6, verse 18, Being then made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. Initially, by grace, you experienced a freedom from sin and found that you could actually obey God by the Spirit after salvation. But this was by grace to get a taste. But there's more. You now need to kill the flesh. Paul uses a natural illustration because the Romans were using their minds. And in Romans chapter 6 verse 19, he said this, I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as you have yielded your members, servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members, servants to righteousness unto holiness. Maybe you're not aware that if you keep listening to, the, to your feelings and emotions and your carnal mind, you are yielded to the flesh. This does not lead to righteousness, but to sin, more excuses and iniquity. No to defined iniquity in his 1828 dictionary as a particular deviation from rectitude, a sin, a crime, wickedness, or an act of injustice. Paul in Romans chapter 6 verse 19 says it's like flipping a switch at the start. In the same way you serve the emotions and feelings and dictates of the flesh, you now should serve the new man instead. This includes the emotions and feelings that come from God's heart. This does not work unless you have denied yourself completely. Paul says in Romans 6.11, Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. The word reckon in Strong's is number 3049. In the middle voice, it's taken from another word meaning to take an inventory. That is to estimate or literally conclude or count you're supposed to even despise or esteem or impute reason or reckon that flesh dead. Despising the flesh does not kill the flesh. You can start by making a list of all the ways that the flesh has access to you. Then start ignoring the flesh or treating the carnal nature as dead, although it's not dead. When you ignore the flesh, it will be annoyed in that sense. It might scream or demand some attention, but you must ignore it. This is counting it dead. You must stop listening to the old nature by putting on the new nature. 
The louder it screams, the closer it is to dying. So have no mercy. Romans 8, 13. Paul says, this is in Romans chapter 8, verse 13. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Romans 8.13 in the Amplified, this is the classic edition, says, For if you live according to the dictates of the flesh, you will surely die. But if through the power of the Holy Spirit you habitually put to death, making extinct, deadening the evil deeds prompted by the body, you shall really and genuinely live forever. Hallelujah. People do not believe that they will die by just serving the flesh a little bit and listen to a wrong voice. But the Amplified Bible says you will surely die, even though you are born again. Paul says in Romans 8, 5, For, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. Do not deceive yourself. What you are thinking about all the time tells you if you are carnal or spiritual, be numb to the flesh and alive to God. Do not go back to the flesh. Do not go back to the flesh. You have to resist the dictates of the flesh. If you are squeamish or not willing to kill the flesh, you did not count the cost for following Jesus. You're supposed to be prepared to lose everything for following Christ. Paul said in, in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 7 and 8. This is his testimony. This is Philippians chapter 3, 7 and 8. But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. Verse 8. Yea, doubtless I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung that I may win Christ. The main reason why people never kill the flesh is because they give in and feed it a little bit, doing something good instead, perhaps. Many listen to a voice that says, a little bit of serving the flesh is okay. You will not die. You are listening to a wrong voice. This is the same words like Eve heard in the garden, we read in the book of Genesis, chapter 3 and verse 4, And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Trust in the precious promises of God to bring the right thoughts to your mind. It does not work if you do not completely deny yourself, as otherwise you will feed the flesh again. A quick answer will not come when your flesh is still strong. The psalmist says in Psalm 46 and verse 10, he says, Be still and know that I am God, and I will be exalted among the heathen, and I will be exalted in the earth. Your mind has to be still. The baptism of the Holy Spirit will help, because this will keep your flesh under control while you concentrate on doing His will and killing the flesh. Baptism in water is for those who want to reject the old nature through repentance and not follow the dictates of the flesh. If you were held under water for more than four minutes, there is a risk that you could die from lack of oxygen. The heart stops. I warn that you have to keep the flesh dead for longer than four minutes if you want to kill it. Paul had to explain that the flesh will die in Christ. In Romans chapter 6, starting in verse 1, I'm reading. This is Romans chapter 6, verses 1 to 3. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Verse 2. God forbid, how shall we that are dead in sin live any longer therein? Verse 3. Know ye not that so many of us are baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? To get the victory over sin, you have to get in and stay in Christ and not go back to the flesh. Do not assume that grace will be there if you keep sinning. 
Paul said in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Getting in Christ will expose the flesh. Then you have to repent of what the light reveals. Just because you are born again does not kill the flesh. You have two natures and you can kill the old nature by putting on the new man and getting in Christ. Paul says in Galatians 2 and 20, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. In the Amplified, it says it like this. I have been crucified with Christ in him, and I have shared his crucifixion. It is no longer I who live, but Christ the Messiah lives in me. And the life I now live in the body, I live by faith, in, by adherence to, and reliance on, and complete trust in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. If you are not clinging to his voice, doing what he says, then your flesh is not dead. Water baptism is a declaration that you've made up your mind to submit to God and kill the flesh. You should do this in faith through the fact that you are going to do whatever Jesus says through the Holy Spirit. You're also declaring war on the devil. Do not be baptized until you have some fruit that you are abiding in Christ. Romans 8.1 in the Amplified Bible Classic Edition says this, Therefore there is now no condemnation, no adjudging, guilty of wrong, for those who are in Christ Jesus, who live and walk not after the dictates of the flesh, but after the dictates of the Spirit. Ling Juron is saying, will feed the flesh. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5, 6, and 7 says this, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not to your own understanding. Verse 6, In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Verse 7, Be not wise in thy own eyes, Fear the Lord and depart from evil. You are ready for baptism when you are no longer wise in your own eyes. You fear the Lord and you are departing from evil. This is the fruit of trusting God. We read in the book of Acts, chapter 8, 36 and 37. Verse 36. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? Verse 37. And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. If you use your mind, remember that the flesh will get strong again. You will reap what you sow. Also, your flesh will stop you from entering the kingdom of God. Paul said in Galatians 5.13, For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not your liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. You might start in the spirit, but end up in the flesh. And in that time, feed the flesh without realizing this is why it is wisdom to get back in the Spirit as fast as possible. Every minute you spend in the flesh, you are feeding the flesh and quenching the Spirit. Paul gave these very simple instructions. He said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 to 19, we read, verse 16, Rejoice evermore, verse 17, Pray without ceasing, verse 18, in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Verse 19, quench not the Spirit. 
Even when you are judging yourself, you are feeding the flesh. This makes it impossible for you to hear what God is saying. An instant response from God comes when your flesh is subdued. And in the grave, you must also keep obeying the Holy Spirit consistently to keep it in the grave. Paul said in Galatians chapter 3, verse 3, Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? If you have ended up in the flesh, you will not be able to hear God instantly like you did before by grace. If you consult your own mind because you want a quick answer, it will cost you. You have put down another route into the carnal system. It will only be easy in the spirit when you kill that flesh and keep it dead. If you keep feeding, then nothing will change. In the book of Isaiah, Chapter 55, verse 6 says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Do not judge yourself or even judge God when he does not answer. Remember, he has not moved anywhere. He does not change. James says, in James chapter 4, verse 8, Draw nigh to God. And he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Jesus is our example. In John 5.30, he says this. This is John's Gospel, chapter 5 and verse 30. I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father, which has sent me. Joseph Hedgecott writes, This scripture explains how Jesus made the decisions. It seems that he would be the only one authorized by the Father to make decisions. Even though he was God's son, he did not make the decisions from his own initiative. He made decisions as he was instructed by the Father. You are commanded to live the same way Jesus did. When you consult your mind, you move into the flesh and even excuse this because you could not hear his voice. You change operating systems. Your motive for hearing God should be that you want to follow him and not do your own will. In your workplace, you may have benefited from more time because of God's grace. Everything needs to be done slowly when you start in the spirit. Do not do things quickly unless you can hear God that fast. Your life should not be moving any faster than you can hear God or sense God directing through the three infallible witnesses. For more information, please read the book The Three Infallible Witnesses by Joseph Hedgecock. He writes this, one lie Satan tells believers is that God has given them a mind and he expects them to use it. I've heard numerous believers use this as an excuse for being their own lords. When you stop leaning on your natural reason and let God direct you, you will not stop using your mind. God will use your mind as he prepares you for every good work. The difference is that you do not take the initiative yourself. The most intelligent person in the world is ignorant compared to God. He should control your life because he is so much more capable. Now you need to apply the same situation to your own life, hearing God, so that you can kill the flesh. Better to hear God and then go ahead. Give yourself more time to hear God and follow the right voice. James says in James chapter 1 verse 19, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear and slow to speak and slow to wrath. There may be pride in you, not willing to wait for God. You do not want people to see you, that you don't have a quick answer. The world will not understand why you have to be still before you can make a decision. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 2 and 14, 
But the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Moses covered his face when the glory was fading. Paul said this in 2 Corinthians 3 and 13. And not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. Church leaders are putting on a mask of spiritualized flesh when they cannot hear, so that no one can easily see that they are in the flesh. This is pride. Slow down. Better to go slowly and get it right than look good and go fast. Let me read from Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 16, and I'm reading to verse 25. Proverbs 16:16. 16, 16. How much better is it to get wisdom than gold and to get understanding rather than to be chosen than silver? Verse 17. The highway of the upright is to depart from evil, and he that keepeth his way preserveth his soul. Verse 18, pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. Verse 19, better it is to be of an humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. Verse 20, he that handleth a matter wisely shall find good, and whosoever trusteth in the Lord, happy is he. Verse 21, the wise in heart shall be called prudent, and the sweetness of the lips increaseth learning. Verse 22. Understanding is a wellspring of life unto him that hath it, but the instructions of fools is folly. Verse 23. The heart of the wise teacheth his mouth and adds learning to his lips. Verse 24. Pleasant words are are as an honeycomb, sweet to the soul, and health to the bones. Verse 25. There is a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Repentance is required. There is a way that seems right. For more information, please read The Guilty Prison by Joseph Hedgecock. The revised edition is available in English. In Psalm 25 and verse 21, it says, Let integrity and uprightness preserve me, for I wait on thee. Psalm 27 and verse 14, Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. You need to trust in the precious promises of God and pay the price. Those waiting on him will rise up and soar like eagles with wings. Isaiah 40 and 29. This is verse, I'm reading from verse 29 to 31. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 40. It says, He giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might he increaseth strength. Verse 30. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young man shall utterly fall. Verse 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up and with wings as eagles, and they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. God can give life to a weakened spiritual man that needs some help. You need to make Jesus Lord. And decide to follow him first. James says in, this is in the book of James, chapter 1 and verse 8 to 10. He says, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Verse 9. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted. Verse 10. But the rich in that he is made low, because as the flower of the grass he shall pass away. People who use their minds to make decisions never end up killing the flesh. Do not deceive yourself. If you are not willing to kill the flesh, you are not willing to serve God. Paul said in Ephesians 5 and 6, 
Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. The flesh is not dead by just a single decision or proclamation. You have to divorce the flesh. Others will think you are crazy too and tell you to do what feels right and to have something nice now and again. This is the way that most live. They feed two natures and they will be left behind. Carnal Christians stop others from entering the kingdom by saying it's okay. God gave you a brain. He expects you to use it. The devil is already training up people to be modern-day Pharisees. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 22, verse 13, But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! For you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for you neither go in yourselves, neither suffer them that are entering to go in. You will have to resist and ignore the advice of carnal Christians around you. This is also the part of the cost of following Jesus. Joseph Hedgecock says, Believers stumble at this concept of submitting every thought to God by testing them with the three witnesses. Many struggle with the thought, God gave me a brain and he expects me to use it. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. A divorce is a messy process. There will be angry phone calls and lawsuits and demands. And when you divorce the flesh, it will start screaming at you too. You have declared war on the devil. You will live in a state of war until Jesus comes. This is part of counting the cost. Freedom always comes at a price. Jesus said in John 10.10, 10, The thief come not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. We were all prisoners of the devil before we were born again. Paul said in Ephesians 2 and 2, Wherein time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. If you are a carnal Christian, the only reason you are comfortable is because you are working for the devil. You are still his puppet. Why would the devil make his own servants uncomfortable? The devil cannot control you once you enter the kingdom of God and you are in the spirit, walking in the spirit. So he has to stop you before you enter the kingdom. Many preparing for water baptism get a lot of opposition, even from family members and lukewarm believers. Baptism is a declaration of independence from the devil. Be ready for a fight. Jesus had to rebuke Peter after he mentioned the cross. In Mark chapter 8, verse 33, but when he had turned about and looked on his disciples, he rebuked Peter, saying, Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou savorest not the things that are of God, but the things that be of men. Baptism in the Holy Spirit means you will get some time to kill the flesh. You also get some respite from that flesh, resisting and screaming so you can hear and do what he says. And do the perfect will of God instead. Peter says, The more you obey, the stronger the spirit man becomes. The baptism of the spirit gives power to the new nature. So that it's not just one-sided battle. Otherwise, it's like a mouse coming against Goliath. David was filled with the spirit when he spoke about Goliath. In 1 Samuel 17, and verse 36, Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defiled the armies of the living God. 
being baptized in the Holy Spirit will subdue the flesh and keep it quiet. Or smother the flesh and give you a chance to hear the still small voice of the Spirit instead. Baptism of the Spirit gives you a view to kill or finish off the flesh. The flesh can even die without screaming. Baptism of the Holy Spirit makes it easy. All you have to do is not use your newly found freedom for doing what you want. Romans 8.12 says, Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. Jesus is our example, who submitted himself completely to God to deliver him. He did not think about himself. And the Father raised him from the dead by faith. He kept to the plan, even though this included some suffering. Paul said to, in Galatians chapter 3, verses 1 and 2, O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ had been evidently and set forth and crucified among you? Verse 2, This is only what I learn of you. Receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law, by the hearing of faith. So many are like the foolish Galatians, going back to the written word because they cannot hear God. They then interpret the scriptures using their mind. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, verses 22 and 23, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name, Cast out devils, and in thy name done wonderful works. Matthew seven twenty three. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. People in the church today look at the gifts rather than the fruit. The devil is the one busy creating hypocrites in the church. In some churches, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is offered in church meetings at the end of a revival service through the laying on of hands. The gifts of the Holy Spirit operating immediately are often used as evidence of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but there is no transformation afterwards. We read in 1 Samuel 19 and 24, And he stripped off his clothes also and prophesied before Samuel in like manner, and lay down naked all that day and all that night, wherefore they say is Saul among the prophets. The Spirit came upon King Saul, and he still perished. Before the Holy Spirit came, those disciples were always thinking, debating, and even arguing. Yeah. Who was the greatest? But the things were different after Pentecost. Paul said in Philippians 2 and 14, Do all things without murmurings and disputings. C.H. Spurgeon defined transformation like this. He said, you hate the things you used to like and you like the things you used to hate. The devil is stealing something when the church accepts a counterfeit of the real thing. It is iniquity because those who are in leadership will not admit that they are really living in spiritualized flesh. Jesus said in Matthew 21 and 43, Therefore I say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. The devil is offering counterfeits to church leaders today. Some are ignorant and many are just carnal, but those who are really spiritual know the truth. And if you have accepted the counterfeit, you will stop seeking the truth, and that is just what the devil wants. In the body of Christ, there is no excuse for not coming to repentance, but time is running out. Peter said in 2 Peter 3, 9, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Do not be surprised if those promises do not appear to work in your life. Repentance is required to get those promises working. In the early church, it was the founding apostles who laid their hands on the people because they knew what they went through to receive the Holy Spirit themselves. They had to repent of their sins 
and pay a price to follow Jesus. Peter took time to examine those who came, that they had the right heart. We read in the book of Acts, chapter 8 and verse 20, But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. It is true that everyone who is in the body of Christ must be born again and confess their sin. And when you did this, you should have accepted, number one, that your debt of sin was enough to take you to hell. Number two, that if God cast you into hell, he will be right to do this. Number three, the sins you committed prove there is no good in you. Number four, any attempt to save yourself is wicked, foolish, and of the devil. Number five, your best efforts to be righteous are filthy rags. Number six, your debt was cancelled freely and at great cost. Number seven, Jesus paid the price for your sins personally and willingly. Number eight, he incurred the wrath of God, suffered and died in your place. Number nine, there is no salvation without making Jesus your Lord. And number ten, that you are blind, deceiving yourself, and now you need the spirit of truth. Number 11, that you would now listen, get to know and follow Christ. Eternal security is offered here. Jesus said in John 10, 27 and 28, My sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone pluck them out of my hand. People get born again looking for eternal security. However, eternal secu security can only be found by doing these things. Number one, by becoming a sheep of Jesus, not a lamb. By hearing his voice consistently. Number three, by getting to know him personally. And number four, by following Jesus consistently. Hallelujah. You have grace and truth through Jesus Christ. So if you're making excuses, this will bring you out of the presence of God immediately. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 59 and verse 2, it says, But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. Some excuse themselves for going back to the flesh because they have not seen any good examples, only counterfeits. Many are told of salvation that you can now be part of his great family. But Paul says in 2 Timothy 2 and 19, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knows them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. You cannot just decide to be part of the family of God without truth, daily conviction, and repentance from sin. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 12, verse 50, For whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. Baptism of the Holy Spirit is not just the Spirit in you. It's you being totally plunged in the Spirit, like a glass of water. The cup can be filled with water, but it's not baptized until it's completely submerged. You can have some spiritual encounters, but you are not baptized in the Holy Spirit. If you start walking with God by grace and then resist the truth, that is iniquity. A lack of repentance is a sign you are cold. Jesus said in Revelation chapter 3, verses 15 to 22. This is Revelation chapter 3. I'm reading verse 15. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I were that you were cold or hot. Verse 16. So because thou art lukewarm and neither hot or cold, I will spew you out of my mouth. Verse 17. Because thou sayest, I am rich, and I have gotten riches, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, one, 
and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Verse 18, I counsel thee to buy of me gold refined by fire, that thou mayest become rich and white garments, that thou mayest clothe thyself, and that the shame of thy nakedness be not made manifest, and in an eye salver to anoint thine eyes, that thou mayest see. Verse 19, As many as I love, I reprove and chasten, and be zealous therefore, and repent. Verse 20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him, and he with me. Verse 21, He that overcometh, I will give to him to sit down with me in my throne, and as I also overcame, and sat down with my father in his throne. Verse 22. And he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. By grace, you might be singing hallelujah, but afterwards you are called watching some worldly program on TV. Jesus made it clear, you need to repent. John 20 and verse 19. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for the fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. Before Pentecost, all the disciples were afraid. However, there was a boldness about Peter on the day of Pentecost. He knew the power was for kingdom living now. The Spirit was subduing those earlier temptations that he faced when he denied the Lord three times. This was an opportunity for Peter and the rest of the disciples not to deny Christ and obey. In the book of Acts, chapter 5, verse 29, we read, Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. Peter, after Pentecost, had no fear of the Jews. And he went straightway back to the temple to continue teaching. The Holy Spirit was subduing his flesh. He had no natural fear of man. Peter was not worried about his own well-being. Paul said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 2, But even after we had suffered before and were shamefully entreated, as ye know, at Philippi, we were bold in our God to speak unto you the gospel of God with much contention. Paul also told Timothy in 2 Timothy 1 and 7, For God had not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. This fear of suffering only works through the flesh. David said in Psalm 23 and verse 4, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Webster defines boldness like this. Number one, daring, courageous, brave, intrepid, fearless, applied to men or other animals, as bold as a lion. Number two, requiring courage in the execution, ex executed with spirit, of boldness, planned with courage and spirit as a bold enterprise. Confident, not timorous. Number four, in an ill sense, rude or forward or impotent. Number five, licentious, showing great liberty of fiction and expression as the figures of an author are bold. Number six, standing out to view, striking to the eye as bold figures in painting or sculpture and architecture. Number seven, steep, abrupt or prominent. This boldness is directed by the Lord when we are submitted to him. You will lose your own soul if you are really following Jesus. People will not recognize you. Through the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you will lose your soul or personality and get a better one instead. Jesus said in Mark chapter 8, verse 34 to 38, 
And when he had called the people unto him, with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Verse 35. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospel's sake, the same shall save it. Verse 36. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Verse 37. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Verse 38. Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. You cannot stay the same and follow Jesus. We read in the book of Acts chapter 2 and verse 39. For the promise is unto you and to your children, to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Baptism of the Holy Spirit is for everyone who wants to respond to the call to do the will of God. Baptism of the Holy Spirit is the power to live the Christian life. If you do not have this power, then you will struggle. The power will aid the spiritual man and not the carnal nature. If you really have his power, you will not easily be tempted all the time to go back to the flesh because you are exhausted from serving God. God is no man's debtor. Do not try to complete things with your own strength. In the desert, Jesus was tempted. We read in Mark chapter 1 and verse 13. And he was there in the wilderness 40 days, tempted of Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels ministered unto him. Baptism of the Holy Spirit is his power to do his work. You cannot have this power and do with it what you want, and do things in ministry your way. The power of the Holy Spirit is there for a purpose. Peter was speaking about peace to those elect in the church, or the bride-to-be. In 1 Peter 1 and verse 2 he says, the elect according to the foreknowledge of God and the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. At the end of this verse, the Amplified says, This peace be given you in increasing abundance, that spiritual peace realized in and through Christ which is freedom from fears, agitating passions, and moral conflicts. The power of the Holy Spirit will hold back the carnal nature with its agitating passions so that you can kill the flesh easily. God is not lacking in power. He will add more when you kill that flesh. You can ask for power when your flesh is strong, but you must be willing to submit to the Spirit and become a living sacrifice. Paul said it in Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We live by faith, based on the fact that God is faithful, and submit ourselves to him totally. God is not the problem. He can make exceptions, but we need to get in the Spirit. You will be baptized in his power if you totally obey him and do his will. Only through his power can we truly please God and obtain the crown and win the prize that he has set for us. You will have strength to obey if you are baptized in the Holy Spirit. John the Baptist compared submergence in water to baptism of the Holy Spirit. In John 1 and 33, he said this, And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he that baptizes 
with the Holy Ghost. The disciples were given power so they could overcome the flesh. And when Joseph Hedgecott received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it was the same. Joseph Hedgecott writes in his book, Wake Up, Time is Running Out, Volume 2, Growing Up Spiritually, on pages 114 and 115. Years ago, I was in the security business. I worked at a large outdoor restaurant. My job was to keep people from sitting on the cars and enforce the rules of the business. I had to deal with drug gangs. I believed I was going to be killed doing what God said to do. When I finally had a major confrontation, not only did I have the peace that passes all understanding, I had joy. The presence of God came on me in a strong way. As I faced 25 men who were planning to kill me, all I wanted to do was laugh, but the situation was not laughable. I faced that gang leader, who was a big man, and tried not to grin. I felt no fear or terror. I told him to either obey the rules or leave. He replied, I am not doing either one. My answer was that he had no choice. He had to do one or the other. The leader said, are you crazy? I can snap my fingers and you are dead. I replied, go ahead and kill me. When you do, the owner will call the police and they will come and arrest you either way you are leaving. He was so angry, his veins were standing out on his neck and face. All of a sudden, fear came on him. He waved his hand in the air and all of them ran to their motorcycles and left. I stood there with peace and joy, wondering what had happened. I always had a reputation of being cool under pressure, but this went beyond what I thought was possible. It is amazing how you can hear the Lord say something in a threatening situation because you have his peace. If you do not have his peace, your mind will try to find another option to deal with the situation. I had no thoughts or plans as I faced the drug gang because I knew God promised to take care of me. Psalm 34 verse 7. When Joseph was baptized in the Holy Spirit, he was given boldness and an ability to resist his flesh that was stopping him from doing what God was telling him to do. He had to trust God with all his heart to face those drug gangs alone. Do not seek the power of the Holy Spirit if you want to be comfortable. John the Baptist said in Matthew chapter 3 and verse 11, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. The baptism of the Holy Spirit comes with fire. The fire represents the fiery trials that he has for you. That will also be part of your calling. John Wesley said this, If you get on fire for Jesus, people will come and watch you burn. Peter says in 1 Peter 4.12, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. It is not the power without trials. But if you are ready to do the will of God at any cost, you will not notice those challenges. The power is not there for you to be a comfortable Christian, but to start doing his will, even when you are uncomfortable. Jesus said to his disciples in John chapter 16 and verse 7, listen, this is, he said this to the disciples, John chapter 16 and verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it's expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. The baptism of the Holy Spirit will give you a boldness to face and overcome the fear of suffering or face confrontation. Before Joseph Hedgecock could go around that corner and face those drug gangs without any fear, he needed more power. And normally, the fear would rise up and stop him. But God brought this scripture to his mind when Jesus said 
in the book of Acts, chapter 1 and verse 8. But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. The apostles first experienced this power of God like this. In Acts chapter 2, verse 12 and 13, they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Verse 13, others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. When the Holy Spirit fills you, the body will lose control because of new feelings and new emotions from the Spirit. But this is only for a short time because of the changeover in operating systems when you go from the flesh to the Spirit. Being filled with the Holy Spirit when you are still carnal can produce a reaction because the Spirit and the natural nature are opposite one to another. Paul said in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 17, for the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. Baptism of the Holy Spirit is something we need in order to please God, and it gives the power to be a witness. It takes more power to be a witness than just go around telling people they need Jesus. This power was given to every disciple so they could be like Christ, kill the flesh, and be an example of his teachings. Lives that are shallow and lack trials and challenges are rarely listened to by anyone. You cannot be a witness without this power, because in the natural you would be overcome. According to Matthew 3 and 11, John knew that the one coming after him was greater. Baptism of the Holy Spirit is greater than John's baptism, which is for the Jews to call them to repentance so they could turn away the wrath of God. Baptism in the Holy Spirit comes from water baptism. So you have to prepare yourselves in the same way. You prepare for the Holy Spirit by denying yourself, taking up your cross and becoming a follower of Jesus. You are declaring independence from the flesh and the devil. True repentance is not just the confession of sin. Water baptism is more than just getting wet. It is you accepting that there is nothing good in you that is in your flesh. You are acknowledging that you need to kill the flesh to enter the kingdom of God. Water baptism is an act of true repentance in response to the wrath of God. Baptism is in the Holy Spirit is what you need in order to finish the task and kill the flesh and make it look easy. Peter said in the book of Acts, chapter 10, verse 47, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? When Peter saw the people were baptized in the Holy Spirit at Cornelius' house, he said, they are all should be baptized also in water because they had received the Holy Spirit. The baptism was a sign that they were ready for baptism as Peter had not prayed or laid hands on them to receive. There was no way to just stop sinning under the law because through the curse of the law we were all separated. Now by receiving the Holy Spirit there is a possibility to repent and obey God. Paul said in Romans 8 and 4 that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. Sin is what separates man from God and if you are no longer connected to God because of sin you will not be filled with the Holy Spirit. It is only by obeying the Spirit that you can abide in the vine. It is possible to lose the baptism of the Holy Spirit through sin. Paul said in Romans 8 and 8, So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. This power was first given to those who truly were following Christ, 
who made the decision to deny themselves completely and take up their cross daily. No one can do this for you. Have you decided to follow him? If you have not, then this power will not remain on you. You must keep listening to the Holy Spirit in order to stay filled with the Holy Spirit. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 12 and 9, And he said this to me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I will rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Paul had infirmities that God did not remove, and yet, he still had the power resting on him. He was trusting in God to do everything. The parable of the wise and the foolish version was given by Jesus. In Matthew chapter 25, starting in verse 5 and reading the verse in 9. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. Verse 6. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Verse 7. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. Verse 8. And the foolish one said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are going out. Verse 9. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there not be enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. The foolish ones asked for oil from the wise ones. The wise ones said to the foolish ones, Go and buy oil. You do not hear this kind of preaching today. Some say everything is free. There are only two denominations of Christians in the Bible, wise and foolish. The wise ones believed you need to buy oil. The foolish ones did not. What do you believe? Jesus said in Luke fourteen, twenty-eight to 30 For which of you, intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first and counteth the cost, where you have sufficient to finish it? Verse 29 Least happily, after he had laid the foundation, is not able to finish it, and all that behold it began to mock him. Verse 30, saying this man began to build and was not able to finish. Have you counted the cost? Joseph Hedgecott says, Many believers make a great effort to walk in this message for a season. However, they only get to know the Lord in a limited way. Their lack of success is the direct result of their unwillingness to give up their lordship. They refuse to deny themselves, repent of their own sinful habits, or count the cost to follow Jesus. Just as a builder must count the cost before starting a building project, you must count the cost to follow Jesus Christ. If you refuse to pay the price for Jesus to become your whole life, you will never enjoy constant communion with God. You will not be led by His Spirit consistently. If you use spiritual methods but control your life, you will be deceived. When you are Lord, instead of submitting to Jesus Christ, Satan has legal access to speak to you. The voice you hear is from him instead of God. Those who are heading for glory are doing the will of God now. Those who are foolish and happy to have a counterfeit rely on the anointing from others. If you keep making excuses and go back to the flesh after you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, you will end up being lukewarm. The devil does not want you to be cold. He wants you to be a counterfeit so that others will be encouraged to do the same. Many try to be hot, but because of the unbelief in their hearts, the devil gets access through lies and uses ways that seem right and they fail again. But iniquity starts when you do not pay a price for following Jesus. Typically, those who cannot hear God say taking up your cross does not matter. They diffuse the conviction, make excuses, give in to temptation and go back to using their mind. 
Jesus said in Matthew 6 and 24, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Luke 16 and 13, No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. If you are not serving God a hundred percent, you are giving the devil an opportunity. Paul said in Ephesians 5 and 18, Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, we all receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit. These gifts will manifest depending on what is needed for our calling to be completed. Any one of the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit is a sign the Spirit has come, come in power, as it did on the day of Pentecost. Once you have received the Holy Spirit in this way, you must submit and consistently obey the Holy Spirit. Jesus said in John 3, verses 7 and 8, Marvel not that I say unto you, you must be born again. Verse 8, the wind blows where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but cannot tell where it comes and where it goes. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. The manifestation of the Spirit are numerous. The church has become divided over the gifts rather than looking for the fruit, that someone is really baptized in the Holy Spirit. Jesus said in Matthew 7, verses 17 to 21, this is Matthew's Gospel, chapter 7, verse 17. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. Verse 18. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Verse 19. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Verse 20. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Verse 21. Not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but only those who do the will of the Father who is in heaven. The gifts are given to you to finish your race of faith on this earth. Someone can still operate in the gifts of the Spirit even up to the last day. Paul said in Romans 11 and 29, For the gifts and the calling of God are without repentance. This is because God is long-suffering and wants everyone everywhere to have an opportunity not to miss God. The gifts are not the sign that you are right with God or a sign of maturity. Instead, the fruit of the Spirit is the evidence that you are still abiding in the Spirit and obeying Him. You cannot produce the fruit of the Spirit by your own efforts. Here are some of the signs that you're still baptized in the Holy Spirit. Number one, transformation. Peter was bold. His flesh and natural thinking hindering him before was gone. Number two, no fear of suffering. Hallelujah. Number three, can easily speak the truth in love. Number four, the Holy Spirit power makes it easy to obey. Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The yoke is easy and the burden is light as you follow Jesus and do his will. Number five, power to hear. Peter had the ability to hear the Lord speaking above the noise of his own flesh. This was because Peter denied himself and taken up his cross. He could hear clearly and speak fast. He had thoughts coming to his mind without reading the verses in the book of Joel. His message on the day of Pentecost was not something he prepared beforehand. Number six, wisdom. The right words of Jesus will come easily back to your mind each day. If your mind is still and not anxious, Psalm 46 and 10. And you can hear God clearly and obey. Number seven, you can easily rejoice always, Philippians 4.4. 4. And because you are abiding in Christ, you have unspeakable joy, 1 Peter 1.8. Number eight, 
being a witness is easy. You're not helping God. You're only speaking and doing whatever he, God tells you to say. Being a witness means you do not tell lies. You do not exaggerate. You just tell what you see. Paul was willing to boast in his weaknesses too. Nine, you are not choosing the easiest way out and what is most comfortable for the flesh. Number ten, no condemnation because you are established in Christ by obeying the spirit of truth. Number eleven, you will not be comfortless because the Holy Spirit is your comforter. Number twelve, you will have a freedom from agitating passions of the flesh which also comes from living in the kingdom now. Romans 14, 17, 1 Peter 1 and 2. Number 13, the fruit of the Spirit is in abundance because you are submitted to the Spirit. And this includes love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness. These are all listed in Galatians chapter 5. Number 14, power to even speak correctly and clearly. You are light and a witness in a dark place. The power is for you to be ready to give an account that is within. You are ready in season and out of season, as it says in 2 Timothy 4 and 2. Number 15, perfect peace. There may be pressure from outside, but you have enough power, even under persecution, even in a stressed environment or home that is out of order. And number 16, new doors will open up in your life because you have this power and are a witness of his ways of doing things. Number 17, the fear of God will not be absent. The devil will open doors when you are not ready so that you will end up falling into temptation. So you will pray as you were taught by Jesus, including lead us not into temptation. Number 18, no fear of being different. You will be changing every day because you are abiding in Christ. And the fruit is that you are becoming more like Christ. You are not supposed to be the same person you were one month ago. You are becoming a new person daily, 2 Corinthians 5.17. You are being directed by a heavenly wind, John 3.8. He called you to be a son of God, Romans 8, 14, and to become Christ-like, John 1, 12. Number 19, grace is in abundance. Grace will increase because through the power, it's easier to stay humble if you submit to the Spirit. The baptism of it is the power to do the will of God. Number 20, seeking the kingdom of God is easier. Number 21, power to overcome. You have testimonies of overcoming very challenging situations. This is also a testimony of how you overcame the devil and the flesh with his power. Number 22, supernatural strength. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, there is extra strength for the spiritual man. Number 23, you are not wasting time. It is easy to take thoughts captive. 2 Corinthians 10, 5. As you deny yourself daily, you are not so easily tempted by the ways that seem right. You are getting on with your calling. The power is there for you. Get it right first time. 24. Your faith starts working easily because you are also releasing your faith in the living word, coming back to your mind. As you listen to the right voice, your faith is being released into the specific instructions coming through the Holy Spirit. And it works every time. God's authority comes through the Holy Spirit's power to do whatever he says. Number 25. Freedom from the law of sin and death. Romans 8, 2. That causes you to disobey, doing things systematically in your own understanding of the scripture. God's holy laws are being fulfilled in you with little or no effort. Romans 8, 4. We even might be unlearned, educated, Acts chapter 4, verse 13, and ignorant of the law, and yet still fulfill the law. This power will not work with the education system of the world. Number 26, greater ability to hear each time, because every time you obey him through the power of the Holy Spirit, you will be given ears to hear more revelation. 2, 7. Revelation 2, 
17, Revelation 3.20. Only through the power of the Holy Spirit will you reach higher levels of obedience based on the precious promises of God and ever-increasing righteousness, Romans 6.13. Number 27, boldness. You will even be bold against a religious spirit and you can turn the tables in the church and even offend religious leaders. You're not afraid to speak boldly to a crowd. Peter, John, Stephen in the book of Acts are examples. You are not afraid to be rude or brash if the Holy Spirit directs. Number 28, liberty. Only truth will set us free. Christ came to set us free. This includes freedom of any man-made laws, rules or traditions of any kind. Number 29, Become part of the bride because you have crucified the flesh, its lusts and passions, because you belong to him and are serving him. Galatians 5.24 Number 30. You are no longer chasing God's blessings. The blessings find you. The blessings are in abundance because you are obeying God through the power of the Holy Spirit. Deuteronomy 28 verses 1 and 2. Number 31. The devil is afraid of you because you are listening to the Holy Spirit and cannot be controlled by the flesh. You have the power to resist the devil because you already submitted to God. James 4, 7. Number 32. No weapon formed against you will prosper. The Holy Spirit will prepare the way so that you do not fall into a trap by letting you know things that are coming before they happen. John 16, 13. The weapons of the devil cannot prosper unless you go back to the flesh. Number 33. Kingdom living is easy. You always have power to do whatever God the Father has authorized you to do. Luke 4.18. The power is not there for you to do your own will. Number 34. Intimacy. Christ is in us is the hope of glory. Jesus will also call you a friend when you obey by the power of the Holy Spirit. You must be willing to kill the flesh. If you are seeking the baptism of the Holy Spirit, this will not kill the flesh. You have to do this by submitting to the Spirit consistently. Those fleshly desires will come back again if you do not kill the flesh and keep it dead. Just the absence of of the agitating passion of the flesh is not a sign the flesh is dead. It might be just subdued. Paul also warns us in Ephesians 4 and 30, And grieve not the Holy Spirit, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. You cannot obey God without the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus told his disciples to get ready for the baptism in the Spirit. What is your Jerusalem? Where is, the, is your upper room to prepare? Just deciding to have him as your saviour cannot save you. That is like choosing what you like and what you don't like. Salvation comes by accepting his authority over your life, trusting him to raise you up at the last day. Only if he's Lord of your life can he save you. If you are Lord of your own life, you are trying to do this by works, and no one is saved by doing works. If you want to hear and get to know and follow Jesus, I can recommend this book, My Sheep, Hear My Voice by Joseph Hedgecock. If you really want to submit to the Spirit by regular repentance, then I can recommend the book, Wake Up, Time is Running Out, Volume 2, Growing Up Spiritually, by Joseph Hedgecock. You need to make sure you get on and stay on the narrow way, that broad way that leads to destruction, looks good, it's signposted heaven this way. Many well-meaning good people attending church are on this road, and I believe this book will help you, The Guilted Prison by Joseph Hedgecock. The re revised edition is now available in English. Today I've been speaking to you about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You may see many counterfeits and just give up and say, how can I possibly live this power-filled life? You can. You must follow Jesus. Take your eyes off 
this world and fix them firmly above. Make your eyes on Jesus and make sure you are following him. His power is able to do anything through you when you are surrendered to him. Things will change. Your language will change. Your behavior will change. Your strength, your mental abilities will change. You'll become a different person. You'll be changing moment by moment. Even people who meet you will say, is this the same person? I tell you, this is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And if you really surrender all and you just make him your Lord, he can do this for you. He doesn't want you to struggle or strive. He's given you this power to make it possible. Believe in this promise. Believe in the infilling of the Holy Spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit so that you can kill that flesh easily. Many have struggled with this. So make sure that you enter in. Let me pray with you right now. As you're seeking this baptism of the Holy Spirit, you know it's important. You know it's by His Spirit. It's not by the flesh. It's not by intellect. It's not by any effort of yourself. So let me pray with you. Father, I know there's people there listening to this message today, and they're saying, yes, I want to do it by your Spirit. Father, I pray that you would answer them. If their heart is pure, if they're seeking you with all their heart, I know you will answer them. Prepare them. Let them embrace that calling that you have given them. That they can be faithful to the end. That they are not surprised when fiery trials come. But the Spirit will be stronger in them, enabling them to do what's necessary. Father, prepare them now. Prepare them just to incline their ear, to hear your voice. Learn, help them to learn to hear your voice clearly. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. I pray that message bless you today. If you're interested in getting in touch with the ministry, there'll be details afterwards. God bless you for listening. Thank you very much.